Autofill is a premium plugin for Adobe After Effects that allows you to fill the boundaries of your layers and uses the transparency or the alpha information as borders. You can use this to create a bunch of different looks like reveals, transitions, animated text elements. And since I work with maps, it's really, really handy for me in particular, whether I'm doing like map path animations or all kinds of different reveals. You can simply drag and drop the effect, or you can use the multitude of parameters to get a really custom look. Let's take a closer look at how it works. So this is a really simple map that I created in After Effects using a premium plugin called GeoLayers. And it consists of uh, two simple layers. We have the background color here, and then we have our map layer. And it's all the water you find around Venice here, all the canals. And you can see I've got transparency. You can see all the alpha here. Now, since autofill is described as fluidly filling the bounds of your layer, I wanted to, you know, use water in this example. So what I want to happen is I want to transition the water over this solid layer, and but I, I want it to automatically fill all of the areas here and like fluidly reveal as you saw in the intro. And this looks really great and autofill makes it super easy. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to go to effects and presets panel here. If you don't see it, go up to window effects and presets. I've already installed autofill and I can find it in the plugin everything folder here. Now plugin everything makes some really great tools. You should go check them out. So I'm going to grab autofill. I'm just going to drag it and drop it straight over my layer here. And right now it shows me that, it, you know, something happened here. Okay. So the effect is applied and you can see it changed things a little bit and it's basically in a preview mode right now. So if I look at the effect, it says preview input. So if I click this off, we're going to see nothing is being uh, applied or happening here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set basically like the source point. And if you look right here with the effect um, selected, I can see right here, well, this is my anchor point, but this is my source. And as I move this around, if I bring that right over my canal here, you're going to see a little bit here. And this is where it's going to grow from. And it's called the growth source. Now, if I open up the drop down menu, I have a couple of different things here. I have noise, layer, and points. I can select multiple points um, up to five right here. But let's keep it at one right now. And let me just go ahead and preview what I've got here. Look how good this looks already. Like I said, this, this can be drag and drop. You don't even really need to tweak any of the settings and you're gonna get a really interesting look. Now, if I toggle the preview input, you're gonna see that this is automatically filling all those areas and it's using the transparency information as like a border. Now, as you'll notice, it's actually not filling some of these areas, like some of these smaller canals, it's not, um, the, the solid is not being filled through there. So why is that? Well, we need to go in there and tweak some of the parameters. Now, the varieties of growth source here, I can have um, one to five points. I can switch to noise, which is just gonna apply a bunch of growth source points everywhere. Or I can switch to layer and I can create something custom. So if I wanna have um, specific areas where I want these to animate in and I want it to be more than five, um, like with points, I can do that here. Just below the point count, I have radius. So if I zoom in here to my growth source point and I bring the playhead to the beginning, you can see it's starting out with a certain radius here, which I can increase or decrease, pretty straightforward. And then here are position controls. I can increase or decrease the speed. Now, if I move the playhead out here, you can see once again that the fluid really isn't moving uh, nicely through these smaller canals. And that has to do with the next two parameters, which are border strength and speed map. So first up, let's look at border strength. Now, this has to do with how easily your fluid is going to move in between the uh, the alpha or the transparency. So, for example, right now, if I have that border strength up really high, it's only going to move in between the areas that are actually physically connected. If I lower it, you know, let's bring it all the way down to one, then it's going to start jumping across and it won't just act as a fluid. So if you look here, it jumped across here and is um, filling this area. So this can be useful, like if you're working with text and you want it to jump across the borders for text elements that are not necessarily connected, like physically connected or touching each other. And if you look down here, you can see it's moving better between these canals here, but we don't want it to really jump over. So let's put it at something like 15 and see what how it looks. Okay, that's much better. One of the parameters that's really gonna change the look of your animation is the speed map. This is probably the most complex part of this particular plugin, but the guys over at Plugin Everything have some really good visuals here that help explain it. So as you can see, the speed map allows you to control the animation speed at different parts of where it's filling, and you use it via a different layer, and you can use either the luminance information or the alpha information. Uh, this one's really cool, I like this one. And right here, you can see if you're using luminance information, brighter areas are gonna make it feel faster, darker areas are gonna make it feel slower, and in regards to alpha information, more opaque is gonna make it feel faster. 
whereas more transparency is gonna slow it down. Now, in the most recent version of this plugin, they added an auto speed map. So if I open this up, you can see that there's various modes. Um, I can add a custom layer, I can turn it off, or it can be set to auto. So that's what makes this version so cool and so drag and drop is that it's set to auto. And just to show you how this is working, um, let me set it to none. And you're gonna see right away, it's more of a circular animation. It's much, um, it's much less dynamic. So this is kind of a bad example because my border strength is all the way down to 15. That's what's making it so insanely circle. So I'm going to turn that back up to 100% and it's still, you know, it's looking a little more dynamic now, but it's still all coming out from the same area. You can see if I turn the auto speed map back on, look how different that is. It's really adhering to the canals. So if you want to be really specific about how the fluid is going to move through your layer, you can come in here and tweak these, or you can go in and, you know, create your own custom layer. If you want to view the speed map, just click on this button here, and it's going to, you're going to kind of get a good view of how things are working here. You have some other cool effects like compositing. You can have it ignore the previous effect. So all these effects up here um, are, were applied from geo layers, and I could have a bunch of other stuff applied up here. And I could just have autofill ignore all these. I can invert uh, the mat here. So if I want to slowly drain out all the water, I can change the color of my fill here. Oh, this is looking like some kind of blood color, which I can composite over the original. So let's say I already have all the water in place. And now let's say uh, there's a red tide or, or something's going on here. The blood, I want to illustrate the blood of some somebody being murdered in Venice. Super cool. And then you get all these blend modes that you can apply here. So you can create some really cool looks. Now this also works really well with text. So I'm going to go over here, grab the text tool and I'll type out the word Venice. And now I'm going to go over to effects and presets and drag on autofill and I can see my preview mode here. I'm going to grab the growth source and put it at the top. So my playhead was over here. That's why we're seeing this filled in. Let's bring the playhead to the beginning. I like to put it at the edge of the alpha here so we have a good um, kind of transition in. Now if I bring my playhead back over here, you're going to see that it's only filling in the V and that's because we have this border here of the transparency. It's not um, the border strength is a little too high, so it can't make that jump over to these letters. But once it does, it will automatically fill in because you see um, this script is all the letters are connected, so it'll be fine. So I just essentially need to adjust this border strength to make it um, have that jump. So I'm going to start to crank this down and see when it's going to... I imagine I have to bring it pretty low. Let's bring it back down to 15 as before. And there we go. Now we have that jump. And I'm going to increase the speed so it'll finish the animation within this 10 second period. Now let's just take a look at it. Now it looks good for how long this took, but it could still use some tweaking. It's still a little too uniform in my opinion. So I can mess with some of the parameters or I could use some of the presets that come with this product. Now there are a lot of presets and they actually have a bunch of handwriting animation presets. They're absolutely incredible. And it's really quite simple. You can drop in a logo or just drop in your text and then change the uh, growth source point and then you're ready to go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to check out more about Autofill, please follow my affiliate link down in the video description. If you want to take a closer look at some of the more advanced features or you want to take a look at the presets, the guys that plug in everything have a bunch of videos. If you want to check out more cool tools for Adobe After Effects, be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, and go check out my Tuesday Tools playlist. I'll see you in the next video.